Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review. So I was contacted by my friends at Andenstar, and they've watched a couple of my past videos, and I'm sure they've watched my past uh, digital microscope review video as well, because they make digital microscopes. Now, as you know, I do a lot of like really tiny micro hand soldering and, and whatnot, and things that generally benefit from either having good eyesight or being able to inspect like very small components. So this is something that'll be very useful. They decide to send me, I believe it's their top of the line uh, digital microscope. And this is going to be awesome. So anyway, very well packed. It came in kind of thick layer bubble wrap with like an additional bag on, on the outside as well that I cut away. So anyway, um, here you can see, let's just see digital microscope. Print Textile Industrial Inspection, PCB Inspection. So that's what I'm going to be kind of using it for. And they actually do make professional electronic products. So this should be pretty good. So anyway, I guess it's pretty, yeah, there's no no marketing. So this is, yeah, definitely it looks like it's geared toward kind of a professional or semi-professional environment, I guess you could say. Uh, so anyway, let's just pop it open and take a look at what we have here it's the ad407 and you'll see in a second but yeah it has like you know an adjustable tilt uh, multiple leds on like a, a flex arms and so this should be pretty darn good let's just take a quick look at the specifications so four megapixel hd sensor so this <laughs> wow looks like it does do uh, above 1080p so like what's what's that 2k or something 4k so it says it goes up to 270 times, and you can actually hook this up over HDMI. That's another huge thing. So I'm going to have to get a bigger like soldering table and hook up a computer monitor because that'll be really cool. That way I don't have to you know, have my face so close to what I'm soldering. And it does take 12 megapixel photos uh, in JPEG format. It says minimum focal distance is 5 centimeters. That's actually quite close. And let's see... Takes up to 32 gig micro SD card, good. It does not support PC, but it does it do video out over HDMI, so that's good enough for me. Uh, five volts input, probably just USB charging. Seven inch screen size. The other microscope that I reviewed was, I believe, like four inches. Oh, it looks like it actually has like a separate dongle to control power and brightness. That's interesting. And it has its own OSD, etc. Ooh, it can timestamp. That's cool. That's really cool. And yeah, I mean, we're going to go through all this anyway. So, so yeah, let's just pop this guy open. Here's the remote. And let's see, I'm guessing AAA batteries. Yeah, it looks like it. Good. So at least it uses a standard battery. It's easy to replace. Buttons are a little stiff, but it's a brand new remote, so got to break them in. There's a lot of different buttons, it looks like, for dedicated functions. So I'm going to have to actually learn how to use all this. Uh, it does include a power adapter. Nice. Actually, it does seem, seem like a pretty weighty one, too, so not a cheap one. Uh, yeah, 2 amps. <laughs> it better be pretty weighty for 5 volt 2 amps, so this is a 10 watt adapter. Nice. And the correct plug for my locale includes uh, extra, I guess these are like slide mounting brackets. And I, I actually removed these on my other uh, microscope, so I'll probably keep these separate as well because I need the base to be completely flat. And the main attraction of the show is, wow, okay, <laughs> this is very well packed. And, oh, it has a protective sheet. We're going to have to peel that off, some ASMR. Yeah, very nice. It's saying the display is fragile. Yeah, these TFT LCDs tend to be. So don't drop it. Don't apply pressure to the screen. It has kind of your standard uh, on-unit buttons, but I'm pretty much going to exclusively use a remote. And it has the actual objective lens itself. And the entire thing swivels. And that's very smooth. It scrapes a little bit, sounds like. So I might have to, I don't know, lubricate that. But there's a very long working distance. Like, 
maybe 10 turns to go from min to max. Two, three, four, about five. So not bad at all. And you can see there's actually glass. I'm not going to touch it because I'll get my fingerprints all over it. It's actually glass to protect, uh, which is good. The lens itself is all the way inside there, which you probably can't see. But there's outer glass like right at the edge here. Um, so that'll be good if, I, if I'm using this for kind of soldering and I don't want to get any flux splashes on the lens directly. And this entire thing tilts and it's very, very smooth too and it holds its angle. So that's very nice. Up here we have a micro SD card slot. It looks like three indicator LEDs, probably for power or battery life maybe remaining. We have a micro USB for charging and yeah, as it explained it has a uh what is this a mini hdmi i believe I, I have a cord for that it's the same one that the raspberry pi um micro was it <laughs> the smallest one uses uh, i believe i have an adapter for full size but hopefully it comes with an hdmi cord anyway i'll just set that aside so i don't damage it <laughs> and here we have an allen key and some more like hex bolts not sure what these are for, maybe for mounting to the base or something. Just set that to the side. Oh, good. It does come with a mini HDMI to full size adapter. In addition to that, we have our power input. Um, this will go, I guess, into the unit. This goes into the power brick. Or uh, you can use a like a USB power bank. That'll be cool. And the buttons, yeah. As brightness up, down, and power. Ah, and a DC kind of jack looking thing. We'll figure out where this exactly goes in. And here we have this is a metal arm. Yep. Let's see the action on this. That feels nice. Yeah, that's rock solid. The machining on this is like really tight fitting. There's like no wobble in this at all, which is really nice. And they even have um, like some soft plastic on these set screws. So if you screw the, um, the base of the microscope in this guy, it'll not mar the finish on the metal. That's actually really nice attention to detail. But yeah, this it's firm, but it's easy to do still. I like that design a lot. And it looks like the working distance is pretty massive. It's like a good five or six inches. Some adjustment here as well. I guess, oh yeah, the two um, hex head screws go into the base there. That's what actually attaches it to the base, which is here. I guess we'll do an assembly now real quick. So here's the base itself. This is aluminum. Everything feels like pretty solid aluminum. So this will be good. I can solder on this, not worry about it melting. <laughs> and we have the lights, which are just a uh, single five millimeter LEDs. But yeah, these do look very useful. You can actually adjust these pretty easily. Just snake head lights. And so I guess we can go through and attach this guy here. Okay, so the base, yeah, I like that. It has nice big rubber feet too. Now, how does this adjust? Because I saw in the picture it looks like you can adjust it up and down slightly. Change the angle. Huh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it just tilts. There's just a bit of friction from the factory, I guess. But yeah, it does take a little bit of force to actually adjust, but this is something that I'll just pretty much adjust once and never touch again. And I guess we'll just get this in. Make sure the set screws are out far enough. They're not going to scratch anything. Slide this all the way up to the base. And there we go. <laughs> yeah, this is a big boy. Look at that. Kind of... Oh, so there's two articulation points, obviously one in the LCD itself and one in the, the base right down here. So that's actually good. You can get a good view for both you and the LCD itself. 
for the lens and the LCD. So yeah, this is actually looking very nice. Let's, um, I'm gonna have to take this off. My stand's a bit too short. Let's do some ASMR, pull this sheet off. I love this, this is my favorite part of any unboxing. <sighs> okay, we're gonna actually do another uh, microscopic montage. And I'm going to directly record footage onto the SD card and maybe do a voiceover. I, I think a lot of people enjoyed that on the first video, so we'll do something similar for this. Anyway, give me one sec. Okay, so I have everything set up here, so let's just turn it on. You can see the welcome screen. Boots up pretty fast. And there we go. We are in. And we're just looking at the base, and that's actually the anodization that we're looking at. That's pretty interesting. Anyway, I'll give you a quick tour of the menu. So I'm going to be using the remote just because it's a little more convenient. Now, the buttons are a little stiff, I've noticed, and it's a little hard to sometimes navigate. But I suppose it's going to get better as you use this as a brand new remote. So anyway, we're going to enter the menu here. And you can see uh, we can adjust the resolution. And basically, we can go, I believe UHD is what, like 4K, QHD is 2K, then we have 1080p at 60 and 30, and then we have 720p at 120 and 60. And apparently one below that as well, 30 frames per second, 720. Interesting. Anyway, uh, beyond that, we can adjust the exposure. And here we can set audio record. Just turn that on. We can, I don't want a timestamp necessarily on these videos. We can have time-lapse record, adjust the sharpness, uh, freeze. So there's actually a dedicated button. And what this will do is I'll show you in a second. If something's moving, it'll just freeze a capture. Uh, so if you're trying to capture something that's moving and you want to create a static image of it, that'll do that. Uh, there's contrast and color adjustment. Other than that, by going to the second menu, by hitting the menu button again, it'll take me into here, and you can adjust. Um, basically, what this is, you can add like crosshairs, and you can adjust the position, the color. Uh, you can just have it as a vertical or horizontal line. You can actually have it as a grid pattern. This actually is pretty in depth in terms of like the width, the color. You can adjust everything, which is kind of awesome, actually. You can adjust the date and time for the timestamp function, obviously. The language, uh, TV mode, which is NTSC or PAL. Uh, frequency, I, I believe this is for um, maybe if you have fluorescent lights or something like that that might flicker, this might filter that out. A lot of camera-like systems have that functionality. Uh, you can format the SD card, obviously. Uh, Go back to default settings and the version of the software you can view. Now, one thing that's important to note that I actually misunderstood. Uh, this actually has no rechargeable battery. Uh, you can see here, um, we're just plugged in. You can see some lights lighting up. Uh, but as soon as I pull power, um, this unit will turn off. So probably did misunderstand that. I assume that it was battery powered, but... Yeah, there, that doesn't really make sense if you think about it because of the way that this pendant cord uh, works. It actually goes into the base uh, first to power these LEDs, and then there's a second cord, a uh, micro USB, that powers the actual LCD module itself. And speaking of this pendant, uh, we have three buttons. The top one is just an on and an off. Uh, we can adjust the brightness up and down and, and actually pretty what like maybe 10 steps or something like that so it's pretty wide range I like that and yeah anyway I've waffled on for long enough so actually uh, let me start recording from the unit itself so to do that if you're in the video mode you can always click this red button and that'll take a picture but if you're in the video mode and you want to record video you click the OK button. And other than that, there is like a digital zoom. And it takes you in, you know, quite a number of steps, actually. 
and that's kind of a testament it's not it's a little blurrier you can kind of tell but it's actually still pretty high resolution looking Let me just zoom all the way out there so you have both optical and digital zoom um, so say you're moving something around you want to freeze the image ah, bad example <laughs> Say I'm looking at this, whatever it is, the mechanical watch, and I press the freeze button. Yeah, you can see I can remove the item and the image still stays on the screen. And if I want to unfreeze, I just press that button again. And then there you go. So other than that, yeah, there's plenty of adjustments for like the contrast and whatnot. There are hard buttons on the remote itself. Um, that you can adjust and you can actually change uh, different color profiles say just use this again so it's in color now I can put it in black and white and toggle between color and black and white and in addition you can actually invert the entire screen color so it's actually pretty pretty wild so we can just go here and if I invert it, all the colors invert, obviously. Don't know why you'd want to use that mode, but you have that available. And uh, let's see, there was this plus button actually brings up these crosshairs. <laughs> so I guess that's more useful for inspection than videos and whatnot. And you can change the video mode. So right now we are in taking video. If I click that button, we go into picture mode. But once again, even while recording video, you can always hit the dedicated camera button on the remote to take a snapshot while it's recording the video. So that's useful as well. And if you hit this again, you'll go back into the file playback screen. And I don't have anything recorded now, but it would actually show up a picture of it and like the play pause icons and whatnot. And you can actually go through and uh, delete pictures, uh, set protections on them so you don't accidentally delete them, view them, and play. it'll play back on this screen as well. I don't think that there's an onboard speaker, so it won't do audio or anything, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so let me actually grab, I have a bunch of random things that I want to take a look at under this. Okay, so I guess first thing we've already kind of looked at, let's uh, loosen up this guy and get this in focus so this is obviously a mechanical watch and i'll give it a little bit of a wind and get it started so it's at least running and yeah you can see you can adjust the plane of focus and you can see everything moving inside which is really really awesome and on the back side as well you should be able to maybe increase the brightness and yeah, there you go So, cool beans. Uh, beyond that, I have a bunch of like different display types. Um, these are OLEDs, and this one actually I pulled, this is a white OLED, and I, I removed the polarizing filter, which just increases contrast, and that allows you to actually see the, the individual pixel pattern. And so that's actually pretty neat as well. You can see the soldering on the back as well, you can see. <laughs> One of those diodes is a little bit, uh, how you doing in terms of the soldering. Other than that, I have a couple more OLEDs as well. Um, this is a dead screen uh, from a Sony MP3 player. And you can see actually very well the patterning of how it, uh, it's a little dusty, sorry about that, of how you can actually adjust the light angle as well, which is awesome on this using the gooseneck lamps. You can see the, the kind of traces there. It's super reflective. And here is another OLED. It's very dusty. This one's actually from a creative MP3 player. And very similar idea behind that as well. You can see just how fine the traces are on the uh, flex that's actually bonded. This is the chip on board. There's a lot of dust on these. These are just sitting around. See the contacts as well. I guess we can go on and look at uh, LEDs now. This is a, what model is this? 
It's a SCD 5583A, and this is an Osram. It's one of those uh, multi uh, alphanumeric, uh, multi character LED displays. And these were popular, you know, I'm guessing like 80s and 90s, and they kind of died out. I don't believe they really make them anymore. They might, but these actually used to be in um, like various car radar units. Um, they actually use these as displays. I've seen in a couple models. Uh, but I bought the second hat off uh, eBay, I believe, from Germany. And we can actually zoom right in. Let's see how close we can get. Now, it does get to a point where if it gets too close, um, I can't focus the objective lens. So we'll hit. Yeah, that seems to be about the point. So that seems to be the maximum like usable zoom there. And these are green LEDs, and you can see they kind of look yellow uh, when they're not lit. And look at those bond wires. I love that. And there's actually decoding, like, addressing logic in here. It's basically just like a big shift register, and you just send it um, for each column. You send it a byte, and that's how it works. I have another one of these, and this one is an HCMS uh, 2915, and these are red but it's pretty much the same idea. You can see there's more um, LEDs in this one. This is a five by seven. The other one was a five by five, I believe. But yeah, you can see these look kind of black when they're off. And we have some uh, WS2812 like RGB LEDs and try to get this in focus here. You can see um, right in there, my fingernails pointing, that's actually the um, the serial chip, and these take a serial data stream, and they decode the red, green, and blue values, and you can see the three LEDs uh, right in there, and I'm not sure which one's which, but you can see this one actually has gold bond wires, which is really cool. Uh, beyond that, I actually made my own uh, LED board sort of thing. Maybe get this up a little bit, yeah. Grab some focus that way. And you can see um, soldering is a little bit wonky on some of these. But yeah, this is for a future project. I'll just give you a big zoom out. Hopefully you can see kind of what it is. Uh, I was going to actually make a LED watch. And this is basically all. These are 0402 LEDs. And I actually could have made it smaller. There's quite a bit of space in between all of them. Um, but I wanted to kind of make it easy to hand solder, so that's that future project. And I have some uh, surface-mounted, like, star Cree LEDs. And you can see here, um, this is, I just, I believe this is just a, a, like, a cold white LED. You can see all the bond wires right up there, and the, this is like a silicone dome on it. And the actual yellow area is the phosphorus that actually generates the uh, the white light from the blue chip. And here, this is an infrared. I, I think this is a 940 nanometer. You can see just how large the actual die itself is relative to the size of the the um, the package. And this is a I believe like a three or a five watt LED. You can see that gold bond wire going over there as well. Let's see. I have some random displays at first a dlp i was hoping um one of these microscopes that i have would be able to actually record um like down to seeing like the individual mirrors but no it's not anywhere close you can kind of if you zoom in a little bit you can kind of see almost like individual speckles um by that's kind of as good as you're going to get. You're not going to be able to see. Now, if this chip um, is from a dead projector, if it had an image displayed, you actually would be able to see the reflection from the lights. But unfortunately, yeah, it's kind of as good as you're going to get. <laughs> unfortunately, you can't. You can just see kind of a speckling over here in the corner. And that's just sort of random positions that the the, um, the little mirrors were in when the de the, the device turned off. And we have some um, from other, like, head-mounted displays, I believe. These tiny, like, quarter-inch, um, I believe they're 
um, liquid crystal and silicon. And these are from like those little um, LCD eyeglass things that they used to make. You can see just all the, um, the actions on the uh, silicon to bring out the vertical and the horizontal. Um, there we go. Horizontal and vertical columns and rows. That's absolutely amazing. This is a, a VFD. And this is a 20 by 2, like a character alphanumeric. You can see the, um, the mesh gridding um, that covers each character. And it's sort of hexagon shape. And then underneath that, if I focus, uh, you can see the actual phosphorus. And if we scroll all the way over, you can see something etched on the, um, there's like little fingers that hold the filaments. And you can see the way that they're welded in the actual filament wire going off to the right. And these are actually tensioned so that um, even if the, the temperature changes, because these filaments get hot, that's how they work. They run a current through them so that they, they emit uh, electrons. And you can see here, um, the arms can flex when they heat up, they'll actually um, expand, I believe. And on the other side, pretty much the same idea. Oops, a little too far over. Yeah, there we go. Just spot welded to a little bit of the frame there. And I have a graphical VFD as well. Pretty much should look the same. Uh, it's just a big matrix, so of the pixels and this one I believe it's like 128 by 64 and this is a Noritake um, I got this years and years ago off eBay intended to actually make something with it but never really got a chance to but yeah and the last VFD I have is a tiny little tube and this is a let's see but an IV3. And you can see that, that mesh gridding. And this one only has a single filament wire, just right down the center because it's so small. You can see the, like the thoriated um, tungsten um, wires. You can see it's like different types of metals that are bonded to each other and it's kind of reddish there and that's to create the hermetic seal between the glass and the wire. And on the other side, you can actually see um, the different legs are actually welded to different internal structures uh, to electrically connect. Let's see. And it goes right through. There's like a backer board made of, I think, some kind of ceramic. And you can see each of the characters. There's a mask and then phosphorus to actually make them glow. So there's that, and then there's the little nipple from the evacuation stem. Now we have some Nixie tubes as well. I don't know how interesting these are, but yeah, you can see once again there's a, a mesh. Um, I believe this would be the anode. Uh, there's some ceramic uh, separators right in there, that pink thing. And the actual characters are stamped out and focus on them instead of the mesh. And you can see it's three-dimensional, the way that they're all stacked. And I have, let's see, that was, ooh, numbers rubbed off. Actually not sure the model number on that tube, unfortunately. I think it was like an IV-9 or something like that. Or an IN-9, sorry. N-series is Nixie. And I have more tubes. This is for a clock that I'm currently building. And let's see, yeah, you can see once again the hexagon anode and then each of the cathodes are different symbols underneath. Very similar construction. You can see, interestingly enough, uh, to kind of connect everything, they have like a little bit of metal that's like contact welded on to kind of act as like a stopper. <laughs> so I thought it was kind of neat. And this one actually has colons. That's what this little dot is here. It has them on either side and like kind of decimal points that you can light up. And interestingly enough, you can see 
kind of the wires coated in something white there, and that's to prevent it from glowing underneath the tube. Uh, any exposed metal in a like a Nixie tube, they are connected to the cathodes would glow if they're not actually insulated in some way. Let's see the pins going out the bottom there. And at the very top, you can see the getter right in the background there. Just a little disc of metal that's um, heated up uh, inductively after the tube is closed in order to, to grab any or to get any extraneous gas that's in the tube that could prevent, like eventually poison the tube or kill it. You can see the evacuation stem nice and sealed there. Okay, we'll keep on going. I have a um, ink display, which is an EPD, a electrophoretic display, I guess. Interestingly enough, a lot of these things have this uh, pattern, kind of hexagonal. Um, now you can see that that's just sort of, I guess, to bias the entire display. But interestingly enough, the, um, the individual pixels aren't necessarily bound to that hexagon shape. We can zoom quite a bit in here. Get a better image. You can see this is a three color one. I've done a video on this one before. And you can just about see, yeah. Uh, it's actually pretty crisp. The individual pixels and have letters written there, SJM. <laughs> yeah, rather interesting how this works. And in the corner, let's actually get it in frame. Um, there's actually like a tab that extends that's part of the structure of the display, I guess. You can see. And I have my tiny little Ardu boy that I made. We'll just zoom out as much as we can. And this one I stuck in a little uh, Dreamcast VMU. It's a little dusty, apologies. But we can fire this up and actually see a display as it's working. Oops, there you go. And yeah, we can just play a game here. Just zoom in as much as we can on the pixels. There we go. Yeah. Just about see, this one has the uh, polarizing filter on top to increase contrast. But even through that with these lights, you can just about see the grid pattern of the pixels. And yeah, this is really cool. And just um, reset as well. An energy loader. Fascinating. Other than that, I have some 3D prints that I made that we can take a look at. If we can get in focus. Yeah, this is the bottom layer I print, um, on a um, like a filament type 3D printer, an FDM. And I print on glass so you can see it's like super smooth, but you can still see the individual lines of how to extrude the plastic. Now on top, it's actually pretty stringy. This filament I haven't got tuned in quite right, so has kind of a lot of defects and you can actually see like the individual layer lines and if I go down to something like this tip you can very easily see um, punch down that brightness a bit very easily see the um, individual layers building up there which is really cool now in addition to that I have my SLA 3d printer and yeah, you can see the end. Of, you can see little bubbles in the resin that cured. Where am I in the image? There we go. Little bubbles that that cured that were in the liquid resin as it was being cured. So that's actually really cool. And you can see the individual like sort of looks like a cartography map with the um, the height outlines, and that's how it prints. This is absolutely tiny though, so 
this isn't something that is very easy to see with the human eye but you can definitely see under a microscope and one thing I thought was really cool is take a look at these teeth this is a t-rex skull that I printed you can see like the voxels of, of every like kind of the 3d pixels that make up the teeth and you can see how it's kind of flat on the end Isn't that crazy and this was all liquid and it, it printed this uh, layer at a time which is really stunning that's crazy so anyway yeah um other than that i have just some ic's that i put somewhere here we go these are like um this is a decapped ic a ceramic package so i just lifted there's like a glass lid on there let's just go and see just how far we can go down on this come on Yeah, I think, yeah, that's about as close as we can get. But yeah, you can see here, the, this is an integrated circuit in a, um, like a ceramic package. You can see the, the wire bonds. Some of them are broken, so <laughs> this chip obviously isn't going to work anymore, but that's fascinating. And let's pull up a, this is a um, EEPROM. It's erasable. And let's see, is there maybe a better one here? I like being able to move these lights around. That helps immensely in getting things lined up. Uh, the other microscope that I have, the light is attached to the lens. It's like a ring mount. So you always get horrible glare. And there's no way to fix that. But yeah, here you can actually zoom right in and see like manufacturer put their little tiny insignia and some model information there that's crazy that's much larger eprom chips i think this actually might be a microcontroller yeah, this is a 68705 yeah so you can kind of see like this part up here is obviously some kind of memory and down here is the actual cpu part um, there's going to be, I, I'm not familiar with this exactly with the architecture, but there's going to be like the ALU and, um, various decoding circuitries. Yeah. You can see the size difference between like the memory that actually uses to store the program up here and the parts that actually execute everything. That's fascinating. This one's uh, Motorola. Yeah. You can see the tiny little emblem there. Change the lighting there. Yeah, that's stunning. So yeah, anyway, I've rambled on for like 20 minutes looking at random stuff. Um, let's see, is there something? Yeah, let's actually take a look at one or two last things. So these are, um, what are these, like Minitron filament type displays. And this one's a 16 segment, I believe, or is it? This might actually be a, yeah, it looks like a 16 segment. Um, so it's like a starburst uh, configuration. And yeah, these were used often in like avionics and that's, it's essentially like a light bulb, but each filament, they're all in the same, under the same vacuum glass case. And each one is individually controllable. These are super reliable and super like hard to find and expensive now, unfortunately. And do I have a bubble display to show you guys? Yes, I do. So this is an HP. I think I pulled this out of a breathalyzer that I don't know how I got. <laughs> I got it secondhand somehow. I think at a thrift store or something. Um, I don't believe this was like an industrial or a police one. It might have just been like a cheapo consumer. Yeah, you can see those LEDs, like I said, the um, the lights, they create quite a bit of glare, but I can actually push them to the side and get them out of the center of the image there. You can see each of the well contacts, and this is obviously a tinted red window, so you can't see the individual LEDs as well, but there's a, they're pretty much like the bars that make up each segment there, and you can see there's, looks like they're broken into like two or three parts each.
but yeah and HP you can see the model number so yeah that I think pretty much sums everything up that I uh, wanted to go through pretty well um, yeah if you guys want to see me take a look at random microscopic stuff in the future just let me know I, I have a lot of fun doing these montages uh, anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and um, yeah what can I say about this microscope it's <laughs> it's leagues above the other one that I was using and just the image quality itself definitely on that seven inch screen just having you know those two or three extra inches on the image makes it a lot easier to see number one Number two, I haven't tried the HDMI out. I'm sure it works. Um, it's HDMI out. Plug it into a bigger monitor, and that, that should definitely make it even larger of an image. So, yeah, this would be definitely really good uh, for soldering, especially since you can tilt the entire head back um, to get a little bit more working distance. And if I zoom all the way up, let's see, focus back in on that. There's a good four to five inches of working distance from you know the, the actual bed of the, the the table itself and the objective lens so you can see my fingernail right there but yeah um would definitely be good for soldering uh the adjustable lights um on the goosenecks awesome i love it uh, the user interface is a little bit quirky it takes a little bit of time getting used to the remote how to navigate through the menu but i really like that there is a remote that you don't have to touch the actual screen itself which would make the image wobble every time you did um, i like that there's a separate pendant uh, for adjusting power brightness and whatnot the leds that you just have separate it would have been cool to have like a hard uh, record start stop button on that as well but you know it's sort of being nitpicky by now um as i noted i don't think that there's an internal battery on this um unfortunately that would be awesome yeah i had it plugged into a power bank and this one you can turn it down you can see it's it's been running for probably about an hour now and it's drained this power bank so um, that's why they include the um, the AC adapter I guess you're just supposed to leave this plugged in which is fine if it's going to be sitting on your bench anyway uh, one less thing to charge and worry about the battery dying is, is always a good thing uh, other than that yeah I love the adjustability the um, there's like a set screw to lock the vertical position which is good and it's smooth when you're drawing the head up but when you're drawing it down you can see it's like vibrating quite a bit so it's not quite as smooth as i would have liked but i think that's something i could add a little bit of um like lubrication mechanical grease or something something like that to make it a little bit better to use there uh, the neck for tilting it up and down is a little bit stiff you can see there it takes quite a bit of force um, but that's something i can live with definitely the adjustment is nice and smooth as well on the objective lens so i'm happy with that and yeah what else can i say um this is a microscope that i will use in the future for um, assembling electronics and this will be actually a good start for um, live like microscopic soldering videos so that's something that i wasn't able to do with the other one because the lights were always kind of glaring off the shiny uh, solder mask and the the working distance between the lens was like really short so i was always worried i'd accidentally poke the lens with my soldering iron this one i don't think i'd have to worry about that i have a good number of inches in between so yeah anyway um super huge thanks for and star for sending this in for review and i'm super happy about this and excited to make future videos uh, using this guy here and I'll take a look at the video quality. I can only see on the screen itself right now, but um, during editing, I'll review the actual quality of the recorded uh, video as well and see if it truly is. Um, right now I'm recording 1080p 30 uh, because that's the max my video editing software can take. So we'll see how that stacks up. And if it's super sharp and crisp, like I would imagine like all my, the rest of my videos are that I take on my phone, I'll be super happy with this in that case. So anyway, um, I'll see you guys in the next one.
拜。